Imagine a person so powerful they could snap your arm like a twig and vanish without a trace. We've portrayed Neanderthals as wild, stocky superhumans, stronger than us, tougher than us, perhaps even better than us. But how strong were they really? And what secrets lie behind their almost mythical strength? This isn't just a story about ancient bones. It's the rise and fall of a species built like armored machines and lost to time. Let's dive into the mystery of Neanderthal strength. To understand how powerful Neanderthals truly were, we need to travel back tens of thousands of years, to a time when strength determined whether you survived or became a fossil for archaeologists to uncover. During the Ice Age, Neanderthals thrived as robust beings. Far from primitive brutes, they had sturdy bodies and sharp minds, allowing them to adapt and dominate the harsh environments of Europe and Western Asia. These ancient hunters wielded nearly two-meter-long spears made from hard wood with fire-hardened tips. These weren't crude tools, but sophisticated, well-designed hunting weapons, proof of their intelligence, skill, and strategy. But could a single spear really take down prehistoric lions, bears, and giant elephants? The answer, yes, and very effectively. Evidence like the Schoningen spears found near the remains of 35 horses in Germany shows just that. These weapons weren't just thrown, they were also used with immense force in close combat. This proves that both power and tactics were at an elite level. Neanderthals weren't mindless warriors they were apex predators, hunting in groups with coordinated strategies. So, how strong were they? The answer lies in their upper bodies. Research shows their arm strength was astonishing. Their bones were dense and thick, their muscles, especially in the shoulders and arms, extremely powerful. Their right arms were often significantly stronger than their left, due to repetitive movements like scraping hides or hurling spears. Imagine the effort needed to process the thick skins of Ice Age animals daily. These were times when bears stood taller than Kodiaks, lions were twice the size of modern ones, hyenas were wolf-sized, and wolves were everywhere. Survival depended on endurance, strength, and adaptability. The rule was simple, only the strongest survived. And the fact that they sat at the top of the food chain says a lot. Let's break down their strength by anatomical parts. Skull. Neanderthals had elongated, massive skulls with a prominent brow ridge. This wasn't just for show, it protected the brain and anchored powerful jaw muscles capable of chewing raw, tough meat. Their skull was like a construction helmet for the brain. Chest. They had wide, deep chests, like combustion chambers in powerful engines. This allowed deeper breaths, more oxygenated blood, and bursts of energy during hunts or fights. The advantage is clear. Limbs. Unlike our long, flexible limbs, theirs were short and stocky. You might think spear throwing requires long arms, but think again. Consider the difference between a sprinter and a powerlifter. The first has long legs for speed the second short but explosive muscles. Short limbs meant better insulation, balance, and brute force. Their bodies were like truck frames, strong, stable, and able to carry immense loads. Hands, broad fingers and short phalanges. Their grip was like a vice. This was crucial for using heavy tools or grappling with animals. They could squeeze a weapon with a force that modern humans can only develop through intense training. DNA, though we share 99.9% .9 of our DNA with them, some critical differences stand out. For example, the LRP5 gene gave them incredibly dense bones, like walls of reinforced concrete. That's not just a strong skeleton it's a foundation for massive muscles capable of explosive power. The Neanderthal body was like a machine built for maximum performance, skull as helmet, chest as engine, limbs as solid levers, hands as clamps, and genes as blueprints for a superhuman. Now picture a Neanderthal walking into a modern gym. He wouldn't just be strong, he'd be a biological miracle. Even without training, he'd outperform top athletes. Take the bench press, modern record holders lift around 370 kilograms. But with nearly double our muscle mass, especially in the chest and shoulders, a Neanderthal might be able to lift over 450 kilograms. His dense bones could bear the load without fracturing, turning his strength into something almost inhuman. Think modern wrestlers have a strong grip. 
A Neanderthal would make them look weak. His fingers, thick, powerful, unyielding. He could dominate arm wrestling without breaking a sweat. His entire body was built for survival, dominance, and raw power. The strength of ancient hunters Neanderthals were incredibly strong. But this wasn't Jim's strength. They carried animal carcasses over long distances. Fossil evidence shows their bones endured massive stress. They could haul or drag hundreds of kilograms of meat and supplies through icy terrain with barely any fatigue. Now imagine a Neanderthal as a boxer. With his powerful upper body and massive arms, one punch could shatter bones. Studies show modern boxing champions can strike with a force of around 1.2 to 1.5 tons. Given their dense muscles and iron grip, a Neanderthal's punch might reach 2 or even 3 tons, enough to crush a skull in a single blow. But it wasn't for sport. They needed that power to hunt. Neanderthals dominated Ice Age hunting. Evolution, anatomy, and strategy made them near-perfect predators. Their muscular bodies, advanced tools, and teamwork enabled them to hunt giants, mammoths, woolly rhinos, massive deer. These weren't just animals they were challenges on par with modern military operations. At a site in La Côte de saint brelade in France, archaeologists found piles of mammoth bones, evidence that Neanderthals drove these giants off cliffs to make the kill easier. Like controlled demolitions today, efficient and calculated. They weren't just strong they knew how to use the landscape to their advantage. Their bodies resembled powerful machines. Every muscle was honed for one purpose, to defeat the most dangerous creatures. But strength wasn't everything. Their teamwork was tight, like a well-coordinated sports team. Unlike Homo sapiens, who chased prey for hours, Neanderthals hunted in packs, surrounding animals and disorienting them. They didn't just share the risk, they synchronized their actions like rowers in perfect rhythm. They also set ambushes. Using knowledge of animal behavior, they waited near water sources and migration trails. These were natural traps, almost like modern security systems. Their weapons were clever. They didn't just throw spears they planted them in the ground at angles so animals would impale themselves during an attack, using the creature's own momentum for a clean kill. And while their physical power played a huge role, their greatest weapon was the brain. It controlled everything. Thanks to their intelligence, Neanderthals survived in the brutal frozen world. Why did the strongest die out? But how did the strongest humans go extinct? Despite their physical superiority, Neanderthals disappeared around 40,000 years ago. It wasn't one reason, it was a complex mix of factors, competition, climate, and their biological and social makeup. Their main competition was Homo sapiens. Our ancestors formed larger communities, shared resources, knowledge, and genes, like global networks today. That gave them an edge during tough times. Homo sapiens were also more inventive. They created complex tools, took part in symbolic rituals, and adapted better to change. These skills strengthened social bonds and helped solve problems together. Climate shifts also played a part. Sudden temperature drops disrupted. What do you think, who were the Neanderthals, prehistoric strong men or part of a larger puzzle for survival? Write your thoughts in the comments. And if you're interested in ancient mysteries, make sure to subscribe, as more stories about human evolution are coming your way. But despite all this, Neanderthals left behind not only physical traces but also a genetic legacy that still lives on in us today. Modern research shows that most people, especially those of European and Asian descent, carry between 1 to 2 percent Neanderthal DNA. This means that their disappearance was not complete, in a sense, they continue to live within us. The genes inherited from Neanderthals still affect our immune system, reactions to infections, even our skin and hair type. Some of these traits likely helped our ancestors adapt to the harsh conditions of the Ice Age. Paradoxically, it was through interspecies mating that part of their legacy survived their extinction. However, the disappearance of Neanderthals remains one of the most mysterious pages in human history. We still don't know the exact moment when the last one vanished. Were there dramatic scenes of their extinction, 
or did the last clans dissolve among Homo sapiens, leaving only traces in our genetics? Whatever happened, Neanderthals were not just strong people of the past. They are part of our history. Their courage, intellect, and ability to survive in conditions that would have seemed unbearable to us deserve respect. They were not wild beasts, but true hunters, Stone Age engineers, and strategists of their time. And perhaps their story is a reminder to us, strength is not just muscles. It's also the ability to adapt, cooperate, and invent. These qualities ultimately determined who survived and who vanished. Now, imagine this, icy winds, snow-covered cliffs, below, the carcass of a fallen mammoth, and beside it, a Neanderthal figure, strong as nature itself, gazing into the endless expanse of their dying era. They didn't lose, they simply passed the baton. Their bones are in the ground, but their blood is in us. We are the continuation of their struggle, their strength, their spirit. And every time we overcome difficulties, when we unite for a common goal, when we survive where it seemed impossible, it's not only our minds speaking, but the voice of our ancestors, echoing through the millennia. The voice of the Neanderthal. If you found this video interesting, make sure to support it, like, leave a comment on what you think about their way of life, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you don't miss the next episodes about the world's most mysterious and secretive communities.